Welcome to the debate on child abuse. Some are in favor of it, are some are opposed. Those for it say, it is a child's fundamental right to suffer abuse, and it might be good for them. Those against child abuse are mostly government agents. Last week we heard from those against child abuse and tonight we will hear the side in favor of child abuse. But first let me summarize briefly the main points from last week. Old, weepy, women, sniffled into their handkerchiefs as they drew mental pictures of children suffering abuse. Some said the Bible says it is wrong to make children suffer, but then again others say the Bible supports it, so no points won on either side there. Then, the CPS workers stated their claim to the right to a full benefits package, including great health care and dental, and to their right to fight for their jobs. Very well then, let's move along to tonight's speaker, George Athalero, also known as Sufi George. George, you may begin. Thank you, host. I am pleased to speak in support of child abuse. As you will soon see, my case is very convincing. Well don't convince me, George, convince the judges. When we were kids, we always did what mommy said. Because she was nice about it, often cheerful about it, smiling even while scolding and ordering us around. It was a happy game for her, and we were happy when we played it with her and I remember laughing a lot. And it got the necessary things done, too, like chopping the wood. Not that I liked getting dressed in heavy winter clothing and grabbing an axe and going into the cold and heading for the trees. I knew it had to be done and I was the oldest, and along with age comes, well, it comes at age first, regardless what it is. And especially when there was no need to play the game, I could relax and learn from her. She taught me how to iron clothes because she said a college boy was going to have to know how to do that for himself. She taught me posture and reading and how to feel happy when I was little. And I needed to get that happy feeling whenever I could. Because, my father was another sort of person, the sort that is horrible. He never showed any affection in any way and he treated me and my brothers like we were pigs, like the farm animals pigs. And what he did show was even worse. He was a bully, very loud, very crude, very threatening, and he looked at us with his fist raised and clenched and ready to fight as he screamed, whatever it was that he was saying to us, making us cower in corners. We prayed to God for him to die, but it didn't work. He constantly swore at us and called us names, and his daily litany was, you bums, you'll always be bums. He never had a kind word, never at all. That would have been unmanly of him, I guess. He was always loud anyway, but his loud voice became rough like a growling bear when he spoke to us. So, it became our preoccupation to escape from this reality. I left home at age 16 as a licensed minister and began college. My brother joined the Navy at 17. Today, we label my childhood as abusive, child abuse. I was certainly constantly terrorized, tortured, struck, belittled and demeaned. Once he stabbed me in the wrist with the broken handle of a rake that he had just cracked in two over my right shoulder. I stung from this abuse for many long years. I hated being abused, especially being belittled, treated like a slave, an animal, with never a flicker of comfort from him. Yes, I consider myself an abused child. I have wondered, though, how things would be different if CPS had come along and put me in a foster home somewhere with a less explosive family. Suppose I had then grown up as a normal child and become a lawyer. Would I exchange that for suffering my way through the abuse? I look at the way my life has in fact turned out and it makes me really happy. I think lawyering would be a grunt. So I wonder if putting me in a foster home would have been the right thing to do. I like the way I turned out, the life I live, the sheer versatility of it all. I turned out this way because I was forced to look at things I would have been sheltered from as a lawyer. 
I know and understand a lot more about things because of what I went through. I know lots of things that no lawyer ever bothers about, and I like myself better this way. I would tell CPS to leave me alone, that they are interfering with the process that is going to turn me out as such a freaking genius. And that I would just suck it up until my escape. There is a lot that a CPS worker doesn't know about a family situation, like what it will become in the future, for example, and what genius it might produce if left on its own. They zoom in like aliens who abduct kids into different realities, just dropping them into different families, which is an awesome power to give to the government, by the way, and it is ignorant interference in the process of social life. I was a CPS worker twice, 20 years apart. The first time, I learned that social workers don't know what they are doing. The second time I learned that social workers do paperwork and go to court. Things had changed a lot. Even sex became a human need while I was gone. Sex wasn't openly talked about 20 years before, and it certainly wasn't a human need. So I had to catch up on that one. <laughs> when a family asks for help, it should be given human resources, actual people who get involved in the life of the family and help bring about some harmony. But if they don't ask for help, then nobody is wise enough to predict how the future will change if they interfere with the family now. A few deaths may result, a few cases, people who need help and won't ask for it, and in my opinion don't deserve if it they aren't even willing to ask for it. But it is not within the wisdom of CPS to alter the natural course of social history. It may appear to be a good thing to do in the interests of attaining social homogeneity, wiping out families who are different. But it is not pleasant for the extricated child, a child who is already developing coping skills for his situation, to be suddenly told that everything is different now, forget about all that other, well, that is disconcerting. As for poverty, same thing. I have experienced poverty several times including my childhood. But if I had suddenly become rich because of a generous government grant, would I develop better as a person than if I achieved it myself the hard way? Without knowing poverty, would I be a spendthrift? My poverty as an adult living in a VW camper van or an old motor home was actually exciting. I knew that if I didn't get up in the morning and get to doing something about it, I wasn't going to eat that day. It was a mundane challenge, but it taught me a lot about the art of meeting challenges, real-life survival challenges. Born rich don't get that. I don't know who voted to give the government the power, but I vote against it. It is ignorant and inhumane to remove a child from his family. As I said, if help is needed, put helpful people into that family, maybe homeless people looking for a home. Haven't you noticed that a child is born with a direction in life? However this happens to be, it is real, and it directs the course of the child's life. This drive should be nourished, encouraged. This right to follow one's own direction, should not be challenged by the state. I certainly rest my case now. Thank you, George. The judges say you are certainly the clear winner of the debate. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the winner, in favor of child abuse, George Arthur Lero.